Hey guys, Super Bro Mike here, and in today's video, we take a look at the mysterious story behind Slender the Arrival. The story that unfolds during the course of this particular Slenderman game is a little ambiguous and requires careful attention to be paid to both the environment we travel through and notes picked up along the way to properly understand. In this video, we collect up all given information and bring it together to explain what exactly Slender the Arrival is all about. So sit back, relax, and let's take a woodland walk with one of the internet's creepiest urban legends. Our story begins as we step into the shoes of protagonist Lauren, who is visiting her friend Kate Hayes, who recently lost her mother Beth, and is now in the process of selling the family home. Lauren parks her car at the top of a hill as a fallen tree has blocked the woodland road leading down to Kate's family estate. However, as Lauren explores the area, she gets the sense she may not be alone. Upon reaching Kate's house, Lauren discovers that no one is home. Not only that, her friend's home seems abandoned, the doors unlocked, and the windows left open. Downstairs, strange sketches of trees and a tall, slender figure have been etched into the wall. It is here that Lauren also finds a series of mysterious notes, each one addressed to Kate from an unknown sender with the signature CR. The first note is handwritten and recalls when CR and Kate used to play together as kids. He would sneak over to her house in the dead of night and the two would go exploring in the woods together. It seems CR snuck out due to an unstable home life. However, things sound as if they haven't been so great for him in the time since, with communication between himself and Kate dying out for many years. What could have caused him to get back in touch? The second note addressed to Kate comes in email form. This note actually references Lauren too, meaning CR also knew our character and the three are connected. This note suggests that Kate and CR have been having identical hallucinations, with CR mentioning he is heading to the doctor for a checkup. The third note is another letter, again from CR to Kate. This one is interesting, as it suggests the hallucinations both parties have been suffering from were born from a traumatic event which occurred during their adventures in the woods as children. An event which neither Kate nor CR fully remember, as they both blacked out at the time. However, these dormant memories have slowly been returning to CR, but from his letter it seems as though he wishes to ignore them, leaving the past in the past. He suggests Kate calls up Lauren to keep her company while she sells the house. This advice was obviously taken, and is the reason Lauren ends up here. However, it seems we arrive too late, as Kate is long gone. CR also left a voicemail for Kate. Take a listen. Hey Kate, it's CR again. I hope everything's okay. I know there's been a lot to take in and wrap your head around. It'll be good when Lauren gets there to help you sell the house. Take a little load off your mind. Give me a call when you get the chance and we can talk. Take care. Upon heading upstairs and entering Kate's bedroom, we make a chilling discovery. The walls are covered with mad scrawlings, images of a tall, slender man, and insane ramblings. These messages point to a nearby transmission tower, suggesting this tower is a safe place and the only way to escape whatever this cryptic threat may be. Also in this room, we find one last letter from CR to Kate, where he professes his romantic feelings for her. This love letter also reveals to us his full name, Carl Ross. Noticing the back gate is open, Lauren heads out into the parkland behind the house to look for Kate and return her safely home. Following a dark trail where she passes by a poster for a missing child called Charlie Matheson Jr. Who is this child and what happened to him? Exploring further, Lauren discovers a burnt out building. It seems like a family home set ablaze many years before. She soon encounters a shadowy figure within the charred structure. 
this ghoulish character seems to be decaying and ravaged by darkness. As Lauren approaches, her camera cuts out briefly and the creature is gone. Lauren then reaches the Oakside Park, a thick woodland full of fun activities by day and a creepy supernatural being by night. She picks up a journal containing some rather unsettling sentences within. These scribblings instruct Lauren that she needs CR, as he knows how to end this, and to be sure not to let him in, presumably in reference to the strange figure in her drawings. Lauren enters the park and begins collecting Kate's pages, each of these crazy sketches and messages leading her one step closer to finding her friend. However, Slenderman now begins hunting her and with each page collected becomes more aggressive. After eight pages are gathered, Slenderman appears behind Lauren and chases her down. When she awakens, Lauren finds herself in a field near the Coleman Mining Facility. It is now sunrise, so she has been unconscious for several hours. Unbeknown to Lauren, Slenderman is now able to track her every move. Another email from CR explains that the hallucinations have become worse and he now hears constant noise outside his window at night, whispers in his ears he is unable to shut out and ignore. He seems distressed and asks Kate if she has heard anything similar. We discover another note from CR on a shack just outside the entrance to the mining facility. This email requested Kate to accompany Carl to the doctors in order to confront the trauma from their past. CR also asks his friend if she will consider returning to the park to confirm there is nothing bad out there. He believes this will be therapeutic and help them get rid of their nightmares once and for all. Yeah, on second thought that probably wasn't such a great idea. This is confirmed in note number 6, another email from Carl to Kate which he wrote after the two returned to the Parkland together. The note reads as follows. I tried to find my way back to you when I tripped and fell down that slope, but my flashlight hit one of the rocks down there and broke. It was pitch black. I heard sounds all around me, screaming. It sounded like you. I tried to follow it back, but I was lost. I fell. Everything collapsed down around me. I could feel it crushing me. Everything was moving so fast. I was drowning in water I couldn't see. Every fear I've ever heard came back to me all at once. Monsters surrounded me. My stomach inverted. My eyes shriveled out of existence and my heart caved in. I don't know what happened after that. I woke up in some tall grass today and found my way back to the house. I looked through the window and saw you sitting on a couch, staring at your TV. I can't write anymore. I can't think straight. I need to… It seems as though both Carl and Kate were attacked by Slenderman and his minions during their return trip to the woods. Was this a repeat of the events alluded to years earlier? As Kate reaches the entrance to the mining facility, she discovers a handwritten message which seems to be in CR's handwriting, but almost seems as though it has been written by a completely different person. He invites her back to the woods again, describing them as beautiful. However, as we venture a little deeper into the facility, a scrapped email suggests that CR didn't willingly send the previous note to Kate, as he sounds concerned after not hearing back from her in several days. So this hints at Slenderman now having complete control over many of Carl's actions. In order to escape the mining facility and reach the other side of the mountain where the signal tower is located, Lauren needs to get power working to the maintenance lift. Now to do this she must start up six generators, however this is made increasingly difficult as Slenderman shows up once again. Not only that, a strange hooded figure known only as The Chaser appears to be aiding Slenderman in his quest and attacks Lauren too. Who is this mysterious figure?
Lauren eventually manages to escape the facility and emerges on top of the mountain. Here she can clearly see the tower, which seems to be transmitting an otherworldly signal. While exploring the mountaintop, we come across a teddy bear laying in the dirt. Interacting with this bear reveals a flashback to none other than Charlie Matheson Jr., the missing child from the poster Lauren discovered earlier. Charlie, lunch in five! Charlie Matheson Jr. is enjoying a picnic with his family when he is suddenly abducted by Slenderman and transformed into his proxy. This reveals Charlie's identity within the story of Slender the Arrival. He is none other than the decaying proxy Lauren encountered in the burning house near the beginning of her adventure. More horrifying still is the realisation that the burnt out house we first encountered Charlie within was actually his old family home. After the abduction, his father, Charles Matheson, burned himself alive within his own home after being haunted by visions of his now proxified son. Evidence of this can be seen in this note from Charles. What's wrong with this place? Why did this happen to us? No answers anywhere I look, am I crazy? These things I see at night, I don't know what to think. Ever since Charlie disappeared and Diane left, I must have hit a breaking point. I still keep looking, I still hear him sometimes, that cute little laugh, but he's been gone nine years. Why does every day have to hurt so much? We get confirmation of the fire itself via a newspaper clipping unearthed while exploring the charred grounds. Back in the present, Lauren reaches a small building with a VCR player and two cassette tapes. The first of these tapes is labelled Matheson Farm. An email beside it to Kate from CR fills us in on its purpose. It appears Carl had been investigating the disappearance of Charlie Matheson and discovered an old plot of farmland belonging to the Matheson family. The date is September 19th. My name is CR, on site of the Matheson family farm, continuing my investigation in Charlie's disappearance. Let's see what we can turn up. However, what he uncovered was truly horrifying. While exploring the grounds of the Matheson farm, it became apparent that young Charlie Matheson had uncovered a dark family secret, and this was the reason why he'd become a target for Slenderman himself. Charlie now stalks anyone unfortunate enough to venture onto this cursed property. But what was it that he discovered? Well, CR comes across the very same information. Slenderman had been watching over the Matheson and Hayes families for generations. We can even see him in the background of this family portrait. The fact he was tied to the Hayes family too also explains why he was drawn to Kate and her mother. One of Charlie's great relatives, Freda Matheson, had attempted to drive Slenderman away in order to protect her children, but to no avail. The graveyard outside the chapel is now a resting place for many of Slenderman's victims, both Matheson and Hayes, over the years. With the origins of Slenderman and his connection to both the Matheson and Hayes family now clear, CR attempts to escape Charlie's proxy as he flees the farmland, dropping his camera in the process. We return to Lauren's story in the present, where she finds a second tape. This one is labelled with Kate's Slenderman sketch. Before we play this tape, we find another note, this time a letter from CR to Kate while she was in the hospital. It seems that after CR tried calling her to no avail, he visited Kate once more and found she had gone back out to the woods for a third time. What Carl didn't know was that she had done this by his own instruction after he was manipulated by Slenderman into sending her this note. The hospital letter references how Kate was discovered with a bag full of pages and a broken video camera. So how did this happen? Well, let's play the tape and find out. He's here. 
Kate realises she has been stalked by Slenderman and attempts to document his presence on videotape. She shuts the windows and doors of her house in a fruitless attempt to keep evil at bay. With nowhere to run, she leaps out of her bedroom window and heads out of the back gate and into the woods. This is the point where Lauren discovers her room shortly after. However, before moving on with the story, it is worth noting a post-game chapter called Genesis. While not strictly part of the main game, playing through this additional chapter actually reveals Kate's fate. Genesis is a remake of the original Slenderman game, Slender the Eight Pages, and sees Kate collecting up these pages in nearby Parkland. After doing so, she is captured by Slenderman, who says the following line. I have plans for you, Kate. Revealing Kate became the mysterious hooded figure chasing Lauren around and aiding Slenderman in his quest. That's right, this freaky character has been Kate the entire time. Just like Charlie Matheson Jr., Kate went insane and became another of Slenderman's proxies. After making these chilling discoveries, Lauren heads up the mountainside and through the mines as she makes for the transmission tower. Kate and CR have said that this is the only way to escape Slenderman's grasp, and it certainly seems that way as he guards it ferociously. Fires and falling trees block her path, and Slenderman teleports around, attempting to cut her off at every turn. Upon finally reaching the tower, Lauren barricades herself inside, where for a brief moment she gains a reprieve from her pursuer. A note from CR to Kate can be found. This note warns Kate not to tell Lauren about any of the strange events that have transpired. Carl asks Kate to meet him with a list of supplies in one hour, saying he knows how to fix things. Moments later, we discover the burned body of CR, his final resting place. And upon interacting with Carl's video camera, a disturbing audio can be heard. It seems Carl's idea of fixing things was to burn himself and Kate alive, stopping the spread of Slenderman's mind control and freeing them from his clutches, much like Charles Matheson did years earlier. Kate was too afraid to go through with this, and so, as previously mentioned, ended up transforming into Slenderman's proxy. Shortly after this audio ends, Charlie catches up with Lauren and knocks her unconscious. When Lauren wakes, she is inside the basement of the old Matheson house we explored previously. Charlie sits on the basement steps, watching our every move. After discovering one last note from Charles Matheson, confirming he did indeed burn down the family home, Charlie has vanished and Lauren is able to head upstairs. She hears the sound of her friend Kate crying. Following this sobbing leads Lauren into a back room, where she has one final encounter with Kate before she returns to her proxy form, The Chaser, and attacks. <laughs> Lauren is now another captive of Slenderman, and will no doubt join him alongside Charlie and Kate to serve as a proxy herself, proving once again that there really is no escape from Slenderman. With that, we come to the end of today's video. I hope you did enjoy this walkthrough of the story of Slender the Arrival and the meaning behind it. If you did, remember to leave a like, comment down below, and of course subscribe for more horror-related content. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.